Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, what I thought I might do today to add a little content to the Audio File Today channel is to take you through a tour of the audio room. Show you my equipment and the current configuration of things that I'm presently using. So let's get to it without any delay. The back of the room has these double doors. It definitely helps the air, you know, come out so because these speakers can put a lot of pressure in this, this, this uh, relatively small space. The chair is, of course, a very important component to music lovers. Um, this one's basically the sweet spot, the only spot. Um, it's a mid-century modern kind of design, very comfortable. I do like it quite a bit. It's a full recline. It offers full rec reclining and the headrest um, can articulate forward like so. And then also it raises and lowers as however you might need it. Um, so I've done a video before about these two open reel tape machines. Um, the the TAC X1000R, which is a four track, two channel stereo tape deck. It plays in both direction and it records in both directions. So it's both play and record bi-directionally. Um, if you want to know more about this tape deck or, or the uh, other one for that matter, I have an earlier video posted up, up about that and it gets into a lot more detail. So I invite you to go and take a look at that particular um, video. The other tape deck is the Tascam BR20. This is a pure two-track tape deck, a stereo tape deck. It only plays and records in one direction. There is no side two, so you can't turn the tape over when you get to the end of it and play it again. It doesn't work that way. It's just a simple two-track tape deck. Um, plays only in the forward direction. So let's go over into the back over here. Um, this is the music, uh, PC-based music server that I had made. It's an HP 23 all-in-one touch um, PC. It is running uh, the J River Music Center 28. It has a two terabyte internal drive and then I also have a four terabyte external drive that has everything backed up to it. Um, I've got about just over maybe one terabyte of high resolution music on it. When I say high resolution, everything is a FLAC file and the minimal resolution is Redbook CD, um, 1644.1. But I have a fair amount of 2496 and some 24192 on it. Um, unfortunately, uh, this PC has become very temperamental uh, lately, and uh, if I shut it down, there's no guarantee it will boot up um, without uh, you know causing a lot of problems. It, it's been giving me these messages saying the boot device is not found or there's an error somewhere, and a lot of times you know I have to make efforts um, five six times to get it to. Um, to boot up and sometimes it won't even. So eventually I think this is probably headed to a PC repair shop to see if there's anything they can do with it. Um, I really hope that's possible because you know, I spent a pretty good bit of money having this machine built purposely for what I wanted and um, you know to have it basically just you know, be worthless at this point in time would be a major disappointment. I know one thing is for sure I, I won't I won't get another one. Um, that that's that's that, that's absolute. So We'll see. It's uh, connected to the preamp via USB audio. I have an AudioQuest cinnamon cable um, that runs back to the to the preamp for this. And um, with the fact that I have a Macintosh preamp, you have to have um, this Macintosh ASIO driver loaded up on it. Otherwise, the Mac won't recognize anything that um, any of the signal that the that the, the uh, PC is sending out. But other than that, when it's working, it works just fine. Okay, let's move on. So this is my Technics um, SL1210 Mark V. Now I'm going to turn this light on now. I have one of these Luma cubes attached to the top to try to uh, illuminate it a little bit better with all this black equipment. Um, this is a turntable that I bought back in maybe 2008. It represents one of the last of the, I guess you could say, maybe more original Technics offerings before you know, Technics uh, discontinued manufacturing um, these turntables. Um, that 
kind of went on for a couple of years and then uh, they reintroduced a new line of turntables um, some of which um, I think the top of the line Technics now goes for almost 20,000 and the, the, the most inexpensive one I think is about 1200 I didn't pay anywhere close to that I picked this up on a deal uh, online back in 2008 it is a capable turntable um, I don't use it as my reference table um, but every once in a while I do like to play it and um, uh, what you're seeing is the red mat is the funk firm acromat the three millimeter three millimeter acromat I rem put this on in place of the rubber mat that came with the table um, it has an audio technica AT150 MLX moving magnet phono cartridge uh, I believe it's loaded at 250 pico farads on the um on the preamp so you know it's a, it's a nice little table it's very very consistent it has very good speed um you know build quality is pretty decent for it if there's a fault it's probably in the wiring of the tone arm and and obviously the the um fix mounted rca connectors and, and ground wire nothing you can do with that um I, this can be modified there's a company out in new jersey that does a lot of that and I've given some thought to maybe sending it up to them to see what they could do to improve it. Um, but I haven't gotten to that yet. So if we move over to the other turntable. This is a European audio team, also known as EAT. And this is the E-flat um, turntable. I bought this back in, I want to say 2014, maybe. Um, uh, got a deal on it. It was um, being closed out, the, the line was being closed out by the dealer, and so they were offering it at a fairly nice discount. I had done a lot of research on EAT in this table, and, and um, I was fairly impressed with everything and all the feedback that was coming uh, back to me. Um, the idea was is that if I didn't like it, I could have returned it, so it was really no risk. Um, but after I got it here and unboxed it and put it all together, I was very pleased with this. This is a exceedingly solid platform. It's a very heavy turntable. It weighs in well over 40, it's close to 50 pounds. Um, and one of the unique features about it, of course, is the carbon fiber tone arm, which is flat, as you can see. So a bit of a unique design. You don't see very many of these. Um, maybe this might even be the only one on the market today. Um, the the uh, platter is um, oversized. It's a uh, high mass very heavy and the overall build quality of the table itself is just really outstanding the fit and finish is, is superb i have a soundsmith power mark ii cartridge mounted on it and it is a very nice sounding cartridge so this is my reference table presently um, I'm, I'm very much um, pleased with it so i do most of my tape recording all of my tape recording whenever i'm making tapes with this and um, really does um, have good speed, good dynamics, um, just a great turntable. All right, so come down here. Hopefully, we'll be able to see this clearly. This is an Oppo Universal Display of the 205 model. So I came across this back in 2017. I bought the 203 for our living room in, in the um, theater. Um, stuff and I like that 203 a lot and so what I thought I would do would be you know in the next year and next Christmas I would treat myself to a 205 but what happened was Oppo somewhere in maybe the late winter or spring of 2017 just announced suddenly without warning that they were discontinuing making these tape these uh these uh, disc these disc players and I think that would caught a lot of people by surprise because there was quite an outcry uh, publicly about it. And I think that might have caught, caught Oppo a little bit off guard. So what they did was uh, decided to make one last production run of both the 203 and the 205. Um, and if you wanted one, put your name and you know, your email address in their system. And when they had one available, they would contact you. And, it took them almost three months before I heard from them, and they did send me an email saying they had a unit reserved for me, and if I wanted it, I needed to act very quickly, so I bought it immediately. And this is my main um, CD player. 
uh, that I use uh, mostly for essay CDs. Um, and I just really like it. It's just really solid. Um, it's connected to the preamp via the balanced XLR outputs. I have the AudioQuest um, 72 DBS Columbia cables um, um, connected, um, connecting the oppo to, to the preamp. All right, so that's that one. Now, over here is a Denon. This is the DCD. Uh, a100. This was introduced in 2010 to commemorate Denon's 100th anniversary. I didn't buy it in 2010. I bought it in 2011, um, a year later, because the existing stock of the stock that was still on hand was being discounted like 50%. And I had bought it because I needed a, a good um, SACD player. And Denon, you know, had a reputation for making pretty good quality machines. Uh, this is a nice, nice player. Um, very, very heavy. It's, it's really, really well built. And I don't know if, you know, to what extent you can really see it on this, this, um, with the camera, but the faceplate has a really, really nice, it's not just black, but it's, it's, it's in, embedded with some sort of almost like a metal flake. It's like a little gold tone to it. It's uh, really quite interesting. So it only outputs a single-ended RCA, but it does allow, um, coax and Toslink. So right now this is connected via an old AudioQuest Toslink cable and I only use this for playing Redbook CDs because you can't output SACD formats in a Toslink with, through via Toslink. And um, the reason I'm doing it that way is that the Macintosh, the preamp, is five years younger and so presumably has a you know, better chipset uh, for the uh, conversion. So that's uh, the way I have that running. All right, so next up is the Macintosh MA8000. Now I'm using this, this is technically an integrated amplifier that's rated for 300 watts. I'm not using it that way now with the fact that I have a tube amp here, um, but I am using it as a preamp. And the preamp on this unit is the C50. Um, the connectivity that this thing offers is just astounding. Um, so many different options. Um, really, really like it, and it, even at its own integrated, uh, it's just a, it's a fabulous piece of equipment. So, I bought this in 2015, I believe. Um, have just uh, really, really enjoyed having it. Okay, so then the next part is the newest edition, and this is the Macintosh MC 1502 tube amp. It is. It took me. I had this on order for six months before it was delivered. I think I ordered it in early November 21, and it didn't show up until May of 22. Um, it is a 150 watt per channel tube amplifier. It has eight KT88 power tubes, four 12A X7 preamp tubes and or signal tubes, and for 12AT7 uh, signal tube. So that's the tube complement. It's really, really pretty. The amp is so much larger in life, probably than it looks like on, 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 this, um, on this video. Exceedingly heavy, and if you saw the unboxing video that I did of it, as the very first video I did here, uh, tore some skin off my arm, <laughs> uh, just because I was just not expecting you know, the weight to be um, it, it, what it was. Um, I mean, the, the MA8000 in and of its own self is, is 100 pounds, uh, but this one is 118, and it's just all loaded to the back uh, with the transformers. It's, uh, they're potted and with all that tar that they put in those things, and it's just really, really heavy. But the sound is sublime. Uh, it's just such a neutral sounding amplifier. It's just, it's very, transparent it, it has nice dynamics it's just very expressive um i you know just don't anticipate them um, going away from from tubes like this anytime soon um i mean it's just been really 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 pleased with this uh, piece of equipment so it's connected uh, to the preamp uh, via a pair of balanced um columbia the 72 dbsr uh, xlr cables uh, the, the speaker cable is actually Wireworld, um, the Oasis 8. The covering that you see 
on it is this basically a nylon cover that I had to put on mostly all the wiring that's exposed. Anything that's not braided or shielded, but more like just bare wire, has to have it because my cat is a wire chewer. He's notorious for it, and according to him, anything that's not covered is fair game. So I would be very upset if he was able to sneak in here, you know, and get a hold of these wires like this and, and, and do damage to them. So everything is covered. Um, leave nothing to chance with this guy. And then on the front of it, this is technically the front. It just has a left-hand knob, which basically just, you know, turns the green lights on and off. And then the right-hand knob is the power to turn it off. It's set to remote because I have it connected via a trigger. So whenever you turn on the MA8000, it automatically turns on the 1502. And likewise, when you turn it off, the same thing happens. And I can use the remote control to turn the Mac lights off. And when I turn the, the meter lights off at night, then the green lights, you can see that on the signal tubes, turn off as well. So the last of it is the Canton speakers. So these are German manufacturer. I bought these in 2017. Uh, they were new then. I think the warranty, the five-year warranty, is going to expire on them next month. This is the Vento Reference 1 DC. Um, it was their reference speaker for quite some time before they introduced the K range, which is their current crop of reference speakers that I think they've incorporated ceramics into the drivers. Um, these are large speakers. They weigh 194 pounds a piece. They're about 57 and a half inches tall, something like 23 inches wide across the front. But across the back, they're only seven and a quarter inches wide and they're about 22 inches deep. As you can tell, the finish is gloss piano. It's brilliant. I mean, it's like a mirror. You can tell from the reflection of the blinds. Um, these speakers play with tremendous clarity. If, if I was asked just to sum up, you know, in one word, what I felt about these speakers and how they sounded, I think that word would just be pure. They're just so transparent. They're so clean. They don't have any form of veil or scrim to them uh, the way that my old Magnapans had. Um, you know, they just play with power. They play with grace. They play with ease. And they're an easy speaker to drive for being so big. You know, they're 89.5 uh, decibels of sensitivity, which is not, you know, really high. But then again, it's not, you know, it's not, you know, like some of these MBL speakers that may be 79 dB. You really need to bring the power. To those so um, these are can be bi wired or bi amped. Um, I just have them connected singularly with the, at the 8 ohm tap. I'm not into you know the bi wiring and the bi amping, and um, just really really like them. They're terrific speakers. I, I don't it would take an awful lot of speaker to get me out of these, and, and I just don't know if that speaker actually exists. Um, you know, I've, I've been to some of the audio shows, the Rocky Mountain Audio Fest. I've listened to the YG acoustic speakers and, you know, some of the big Sonus Fiber speakers. And these speakers compete with, with, with some of the best around. So I'm not um, anticipating ever getting out of these. So hopefully I'll never have to. And so that is basically it. Um, the turntables came. The Technics, just to kind of clean it up here. This little dust cover, that one came with the SL1210 Mark V. The other, and it, it's kind of thin, it's really very light, you know. It's got this little Technics thing on there. This one I actually had to have made. The EAT flat did not come with a dust cover, so I found this fellow who does custom covers and gave him all the dimensions and what I wanted, and he did a great job. It's a, it's a heavy cover, the, the acrylic that he used on there, very, very thick. So uh, that's basically it. Now you've seen the room and all the equipment in it. So um, if you like what you see, leave some comments. Um, I would appreciate it. Uh, give us a thumbs up for a hit the like button, and I invite you to subscribe. I will be posting other content um, not too long from now. I have some plans for some, some future videos that I've been getting ready to produce. And uh, that will be coming up soon. If you want to get notified whenever any content is posted, hit that bell icon. And until the next video, uh, thank you for coming by and watching. I bid you peace wherever you are in the world. 
Thank you for being here. We'll see you again.